What is up, everybody? I am Get Flanked, and today we're going to be going over some tips for the solo cures out there. This is one of the more requested videos that I get from time to time. And if you've ever watched me live stream, you know that I do solo queue a lot. I actually have an account that's pretty much dedicated to solo queuing. I do play with friends on it from time to time, but usually at the beginning of the season, I use that account to solo queue on and see how high I can uh, solo queue up. It's always a goal of mine to be able to solo queue up to platinum every season. Now, if you're looking for somebody who uh, can give you tips on how to solo queue up to diamond, you're probably gonna have to go elsewhere because I've never actually achieved that. The highest I've ever solo queued is plat two, and I think I've hit that a couple different times. Um, but uh, yeah, I've never been able to hit diamond, and there are people who do it. Uh, there are people who solo queue up to diamond uh, every season. It's definitely possible. It's just not something I've ever been able to achieve. With that said, I have been able to consistently hit platinum over the last several seasons, and in this video, I'm gonna go over over some of the things I've learned during that process to help you hit that same goal. Now, the way this video is going to be structured is I'm first going to be giving tips on attacking when solo queuing. I uh, will focus on the attacking side. Then we'll go into some tips for defending as a solo queuer. And then at the end, we're going to go over what I consider to be good solo queue operators versus bad solo queue operators. And I'll give you some suggestions on operators that I think uh, really work well for a solo queuer and ones that you should avoid. Now, the tips I'm going to be giving in this video are more mindset style tips. These aren't going to be tips like, hey, go here, open this line of sight, really specific style tips. This is going to be tips that are designed to allow you to um, establish a better mindset instantly when you're solo queuing. So it won't matter what map you're on necessarily. You can still improve uh, and just uh, you know perform better when you are solo queuing. Okay, getting into the tips and starting out with attack here, this is probably the best tip that I can give. And if you only take one thing from this video, make it this, okay? When you're attacking as a solo queuer, do not go lone wolf across the map, okay? And this is this has taken me a while to learn. This is a bad habit that I have, uh, and it's taken me a while to learn just um, you know how bad of an idea this is, okay? What I mean by this is do not enter the map by yourself at the furthest point away from the objective and then try to like crouch walk your whole way from that point to the objective, okay? When you do that, you're way over complicating things and you're honestly making yourself a pretty easy kill for any defending roamers. I actually recommend that you try to play with your teammates or at least in proximity of your teammates. And this can be tough because it's always hard to tell what randoms are, are going to do. And sometimes, you know, they can have a completely different plan than you do. And it can, you know, take you out of your comfort zone and put you in a situation where, you know, you're, you're, you don't normally play. But let me go into a custom game right now and just kind of demonstrate a very, very simple concept of why I recommend this. Okay, so here we are in a custom game, and we're on coastline, and I want you to pretend that we're attacking the hookah objective. It's the objective that's on the second floor, all the way across the map. I'm pretty much at the furthest point away from the hookah objective right now. Ignore these icons. That's the uh, sunrise uh, blue bar objective. We're attacking the hookah objective, okay? And let's say that I decide I'm solo queuing, and I'm going to lone wolf, enter the service entrance over here, and then push the objective from here, okay? And let's even pretend that I'm being responsible. I'm gonna drone it out, make sure it's all clear. I'm gonna kind of fast forward through this. I'm not gonna do a good job of droning. Just showing you like, you know, that I'm going through the motions of droning. It's clear and I know it's safe to enter the service door, okay? First of all, I'm in now, that's great, but it's very likely that I was the first person to make noise on the map. It depends on what my random teammates were doing. They may very well still be in spawn. They may very well still be on the roof. And when you're the first person to break a barricade or open a hatch or something like that, that's usually going to draw some attention from the defenders. That's something you always have to be aware of. And sometimes it's unavoidable. I'm not suggesting that you wait for your random teammates to make noise before you do, but you have to be aware of that. So if I'm the first person to break this barricade, there's usually going to be some type of room or something that's going to hear that and draw attention and set up, set themselves up in a place where they're going to try and act upon that information. So anyway, I'm inside of here right now, and I want you to really focus on how complicated things are for me now in order for me to make my way from here to the objectives look how complicated this is okay if i'm trying to exit out this way there's so many places that a fender can be here it's going to be pretty much impossible for me to single-handedly drone out everywhere a defender can be here and where i can be an easy kill from if they're holding the angle on me waiting to leave this door the same is really true from the other side okay if i'm deciding i want to exit out this side there's just so many places that a defender can be here. And at the end of the day, I just, 
I feel like I'm, I've overcomplicated things by entering this far away from the objective, being by myself, and trying to push the objective from here, okay? So let me show you a different scenario. Let's say that me and a random teammate decide to enter VIP, okay? Um, it could be several teammates. It could be just one, but uh, it, it, it could be that I convinced you know a teammate to come with me. It could be that you just see the teammate heading this way and decide to go with them. But okay, me and a teammate are going to enter VIP. So I can now base what I do based off of what the teammate does. Okay, let's say the random teammate decides to come over here and hold this angle um, looking into the objective from here. Well, based off of that information, I can now push this way. Okay, and as long as my teammate is alive in there and VIP, I know that my flank is safe, that nobody's gonna be pushing me from here as long as my teammate is alive. I also know pretty much that no defenders are gonna be able to cross from here through here without my teammate either dying or killing them, okay? Ideally, <laughs> I, I should know that information. You know, it can be tough to depend on random teammates, but ideally I should you know, know those two things. So with that information, I can now push over to this side. I can sit here and be on drone safely. Uh, and then I could actually drone out this area here. I can drone out top white stairs and I can drone out really luggage and if i decide i want to push this way okay uh, if i decide i want to uh to drone this out i see it's clear i'm going to place an air jab here i'm going to place an air jab here now we know that nobody can rotate this way without making some noise and i can now come over to 90 hallway and start pushing towards the objective with my teammates okay um that is a much simpler and more effective attack than trying to lone wolf from service, okay? And the big thing here is, as I'm pushing this way, if I've got a teammate with me, I can get information from them, even if they don't make a, a call out. Let's say that while I'm over here in penthouse, my teammate dies, okay? Even if they don't make a call out, I now know roughly where a defender has to be. They could be in uh, VIP, or they could be, you know, an objective to right here, okay? But that's still more information than I get whenever I just lone wolf. Um, so I'm not suggesting that you sit on top of your teammates and hold the same angles. I'm not suggesting that you bait your random teammates. I'm just suggesting that you try to play in proximity of them. That way you're gonna simplify things and you're going to allow yourself to get information from them even if they're not making call outs. Okay, now this doesn't mean that you always have to play in close proximity to your random teammates. On the screen right now, you're going to see a clip of me lone wolfing and doing it in a way that I do recommend. If you're going to go off by yourself and not play with your teammates, I recommend that you do it by applying direct pressure to the site. Uh, if uh, Coastline is the map that you're playing, that last example, if I decide to go off by myself, they're attacking that hookah objective. It's not a bad idea just to get on hookah balcony and be applying pressure from there and see what kind of weaknesses you can kind of probe out in the defense there. Um, that's not a bad idea. On this clip, you're going to see I'm playing as Nomad. I'm going to set up the air jabs to watch the typical runouts, and then I'm going to apply pressure directly to this top floor site from these windows. And I'm going to drone out, see where the weaknesses are, see if I can find a place where I can enter. And I'm doing all this by staying really close to the site. I'm not trying to lone wolf across the map. And this is a much better way of doing it, in my opinion. I don't have to work with my random teammates. I think in this clip, I'm actually I'm, I'm actually duo queuing, but I'm not playing with anybody. I'm you know doing this by myself. And you know I just wanted to show you this because it's not like you always have to play with your random teammates. You can lone wolf. You just need to make it simple by um, staying closer to the site. Just don't try to cover a lot of ground when you're by yourself. Okay, the last tip that I want to go over on the attacking side is that I want you to be careful of droning too far ahead for yourself, okay? It's good to drone the room that you're going to enter. It's good to drone one, maybe two rooms, but don't get in the habit of droning the room you're going to enter and keep going, 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 going. And there's several reasons for that. One, you're vulnerable while you're on your drone. And when you're solo queuing, a lot of times you don't have anybody watching your back. Two, if you get too far ahead with your drone, then siege timing gods are going to strike you down by uh, somebody will rotate into that room that you're getting ready to, to enter. You just droned it out. You saw it was clear. But in the time since you moved your drone out of that room and into the next room, a defender could come in and um, you know, you can't rely on that information anymore. So just be careful of droning too far ahead. I'm not saying not to drone at all. Just be careful of spending too much time and going too far with your drone. Okay, moving on to the defensive side and a couple tips here, and they're much easier because in my opinion, defending as a solo queuer is much easier than attacking. You have much more flexibility in how you can play as a defender when solo queuing than on attack. 
And the first thing that I'll say is, as far as a play style that I recommend, I don't recommend a deep, deep roam for a long time, okay? And I don't recommend necessarily that you anchor, okay? You can anchor if you're playing with good randoms. But if you're playing with randoms that are going out spawn peaking and dying very early in the round, then you as an anchor are not going to find very much success, okay? What I recommend as a play style is like a one size fits all play style. It's going to work in the majority of your solo queue matches. It's like a a half roam, half lurk. So in the beginning of the round, I do recommend getting off site and trying to pick up on where the attackers are coming from and maybe trying to get an easy kill. You know, you hear an attacker that's entering a barricade, you can act on that, get an easy kill early in the round. As the first 30 seconds, maybe the first minute of the round goes by, you start making your way back to site and lurking, not necessarily in sight, but around the site. That way you can you can be in a position where you know you're going to do some good, okay? If you're deep roaming for too long into the round, it's possible that the attackers can enter the site, put direct pressure on it, make their way into the site, and you will have done no good. But if you're careful in coming, making your way back to the site within the first minute of the round, usually you're going to put yourself in a position where you have to do some good and where the attackers have to go through you in order to take site control. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't anchor. And the next tip that I'm going to give you is to try to fill the void on your team. If you notice that your team is made up of three, four people that want to go out and roam, then yeah, you should play that anchor, play that maestro or something like that on site. Fill the void on your team based upon what your random teammates are wanting to do. Um, and then the last thing I'll say here on defense is you want to probably be one of the last people to pick your uh, operator. And I know that if everybody does this, it doesn't work. But if you're the last person to pick and you see that you need a bandit, you can do that. If you pick early on and you don't pay attention, then you might not end up with the operator and the utility that your team needs to defend a certain gadget. Okay. So I always kind of try to like to wait and see what operators my teammates are picking. You also get a sense of whether or not they're going to roam or not based on the operators they're picking. That way I can make my, my choice last and bring what I think is best for the team based upon what my random teammates have chosen so far. Okay, just a couple general tips here that I'm going to give you about comms and then we'll get into what operators I recommend for solo queuing. First of all, be nice. Um, the best way of earning um, some credibility with random teammates is to tell them nice try. If they're in a 1v4 and they get a couple kills and you come on comms after they die, they don't clutch the round and you say, hey, nice try. That's like a really good way of establishing some rapport with random teammates and getting things off on the right track, okay? I do recommend trying to start the comms off in the ban phase. Just something as simple as, hey, anybody that you guys want to ban can, you know, start the comms off and, uh, you know, allow you to see how many people have mics and how many people are willing to talk and just get things started on the right track. Okay, so now let's talk about operator selection for solo cures, okay? And we'll start with attack. Here are a few good solo cure attack operators in my opinion first of all nomad and it's pretty obvious nomad can throw her air jab and watch the flank for you when you're solo queuing you're not going to have information a lot of times but with an air jab you can at least know hey nobody's coming from this way unless they make a really loud noise gridlock same concept um twitch the thing i like about twitch obviously she's got a great gun um her drone can allow you to kind of clear your own way um so you can drone ahead of, of you you know wherever you're going and clear any like a, a goo mine, clear an Ella mine, clear a Capcom trap and stuff like that. Uh, I think I just think Twitch is a really good solo queue operator. Thatcher, uh, same concept, and uh, it, you know you can help your team this way. So if your random teammates taking um, thermite, you can go, you can do your job as Thatcher, and then you can kind of go do your own thing. Um, you know you can you can you know push from a different angle or whatever you want to do after that. Um, I think Thatcher is a good um, solo queue operator uh, for sure. Last one I'll mention on the attacking side is Zofia. Zofia can just do a lot of things. She can play vertically. She's got a good gun. She can um, kind of, you know, you can use those concussion proximity mines to tell if anybody's around a corner or stuff like that. Zofia overall is just a really good solo queue operator. Uh, as far as ones that I do not recommend on attack, Buck, okay? And this is going to probably be kind of controversial, but... As a solo queue player, if you are having to go and play vertically, first of all, you're having to complicate things by taking uh, an additional part of the map. And if your random teammates aren't you know, willing to do that with you, you're going to be by yourself. Um, it's kind of what we talked about in the beginning. 
Also, while you're bucking and looking through the floor, you're very vulnerable to a flank. And if your random teammates aren't watching that for you, it can it can you know be a really easy kill for the defenders. So that's why I don't recommend buck. Kind of the same idea with fuse. Um, fuse is an operator that I recommend for a solo queue player. Uh, and last, I'll say IQ. And again, kind of controversial, but when you're IQ and you have your gadget out, you're very vulnerable. And if your teammates aren't working with you to cover you, you, uh, you you're, you're just vulnerable and can, can do more harm than good. So that's why I don't recommend them. Okay, moving on to defense now. And the defending operators that I recommend for the solo queue would be Jaeger. I mean, he's just an all-around great op. You can set down your gadget. You don't have to do anything else. Um, you can play a lot of different ways with him. You can do that kind of um, roam that I was talking about earlier. Um, so obviously Jaeger is a good one. Rook, um, again, you set down your gadget. You help the whole team out. You've got an anchor um, that you can play with. You've got an ACOG, good solo queue operator. Vigil is another good one. Um, for kind of the same reasons as Jaeger, but um, also, you know, if you're out there roaming and the, you know, the the other team is droning you, you can use his gadget to kind of get back to the objective undetected, stuff like that. Uh, Doc is a good one. Uh, Maestro, if you're deciding to anchor as a solo cure, Maestro is probably the best operator for, for anchoring. You have those bulletproof cameras that you can get information from. Um, if you find yourself, you know, your random teammates die early, you find yourself in a 1v3, 1v4, there's no better operator to have than Maestro with those 81 bullets. Uh, and probably the best solo queue operator overall, in my opinion, is Legion. And the reason is just because Legion gives you so much information with those mines. You can lay those down. And even if you're not getting call outs from teammates, when one of those mines goes off, you're going to know where the attackers are pushing from. You're going to get that information and be able to act on it. So Legion is probably the number one defending solo queue operator operator in my opinion uh bad solo queue operators on defense well, number one would be cavera um cavera is the reason i don't recommend her is because you're kind of required to deep roam uh if your teammates die on site and you find yourself in like a 1v3 as a cavera that's a really bad situation to be in uh and then uh, Pulse is another one for kind of the same reason. A lot of time with Pulse, you're going to be going underneath the site or something like that. And again, if the attackers push really directly onto the site and take it over, you're going to be in a bad situation with you know that UMP, which is tough to use in like a 1v3, 1v4 situation. So guys, that's really it for the video. Hopefully this helps you out if you're solo queuing. Uh, again, the big thing is try to play in proximity with your teammates. That's going to help you out a ton on the attacking side. If you all enjoyed this video, please make sure that you like and subscribe, and I'll have more coming your way here soon.